What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Without further ado, I really want to get in here and see if we could get an epic cheese pull. Super creamy, by the way. Super creamy. Mmm. Mmm. That's honestly insane. All the pepperonis are just catching the little macaronis that fall down. The perfect amount of sauce. I know it looks like a lot of liquid, to be fair. If you aren't aware of how much liquid pasta really soaks up when it cooks, it really needs a lot. And especially if you like really saucy mac and cheeses, really cheesy mac and cheeses like we all do. You just need that extra liquid in order to do that. And the nice thing about using this method too is you really don't need any flour. All the starch from the pasta is released into that liquid while it's cooking and it kind of like thickens it up and emulsifies the sauce. So hot. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy that I decided to use goat cheese in this. I was gonna use cream cheese. I was gonna go to the store buy cream cheese and then I looked at my fridge and I have a log of goat cheese just sitting there. So I'm like, oh my God, I love goat cheese and marinara sauce. I love it. And it is so good in here. You could definitely add red pepper flake to this and it would be amazing. Like thinking of things that you would like top pizza with. Oregano, you noticed I used fresh oregano, fresh minced garlic, and fresh grated onion. A really good hack to really get that onion flavor in everything. Plus it just tastes, it tastes way more oniony than using onion powder. Same with the garlic, the garlic has like almost a, a bite to it compared to powdered granulated garlic. extremely hot. <laughs> I really asked for it, didn't I? This is very exciting. I am gonna keep making mac and cheese like this. This hack is going for like ever.
It really is burning up though. You know what else I like about this? I was gonna add more tomato sauce. And I'm glad I didn't because I feel like it wouldn't have been as much like a mac and cheese as it was like a tomato-y, creamy, cheesy pasta. This definitely still says mac and cheese to me, but it also says pizza. Like you're getting all of the nuances of pizza between the tomato sauce, the oregano, the garlic, oh, the mozzarella. Have you guys seen Fat Kitten? I think you've seen Fat Kitten. Oh, come here, you big lug. Oh, I know, he's very fat. He's very fat. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Still stringy. Look at that pepperoni. Look at him. Look at him. All right. Oh, get done. Are you gonna have some pizza mac and cheese? I'm not, because I gotta go to the gym. I know. When you get home from the gym? Maybe. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Love you back. Love you back.
Yes. You have to try this. It's too easy not to. And honestly, just way too delicious not to. This was definitely not like a final recipe thing, but I'm really happy with this first go, especially with the top. How awesome is it? Obviously the top is not anywhere near a hack. It's actually fairly time consuming and the sheets of phyllo dough, this is phyllo, are extremely delicate. I had to put all of the sheets that I was using in between two damp towels, take them out one by one to put them on a piece of parchment paper, completely cover each in butter or olive oil. I used olive oil today and just keep layering and layering. So there's 10 layers here. If you don't wanna do this, even though I have to say it looks extraordinarily impressive, you can buy the pre-cooked phyllo cups that you just like would put filling into for an appetizer and you could like crush them up and use it as breadcrumbs. All right, I kind of just want to like smash into the center of it. <sighs> oh. Look at that. 
all of those flaky layers. They're all so crispy. Mmm. 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 Oh my gosh. That pillow dough is out of control. I feel like I'm like digging for gold here. Hmm. The phyllo is like flaking off as I'm picking it up from all of the different layers. So I keep getting a little piece in every bite. So creamy. The feta has a really nice tang to it. And I added a bunch of Parmesan cheese, about two cups or so. So that kind of balances out that tang as a nice like salty nuttiness. Freaking awesome, man. The layers are like almost aggressive. Like, whoa, how many are you gonna add? But this, yeah, perfection. That extra pastry, by the way, you can do a couple things with it. You can cut it into circles or squares, put them in a cupcake tin, and make your own little phyllo cup things. Or you could just break it off as is if you wanted extra topping for this. So when you go to serve yourself, if you want extra topping, you just like break off another little piece of the rest of the phyllo. I absolutely love feta for mac and cheese. I feel like anytime you're trying to make mac and cheese, you want it to be salty and tangy. In my opinion, that's why people add mustard to mac and cheese for a little tang. Feta really accomplishes that. Super creamy. You could add just like blocks of feta into your like standard mac and cheese and it would be amazing too. Mm. This time I added about four cups of liquid. It was about two and a half cups, a half and a half, a cup and a half of water into the casserole dish with the dry macaroni and the feta. I would go ahead and add six full cups. I also baked this at 375 with the top because I was like, oh, maybe I can just put it all in together. It'll be great. Um, I think that the macaroni really needed to go in at 350 to give the feta a little bit more of an opportunity to get 
luscious like you've seen in the baked feta pasta videos. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That was so delicious. I can't wait to work on this recipe a little bit more. I'm like full on obsessed with it for a few reasons. Again, I love the feta. This whole phyllo situation on top looks so impressive. It tastes delicious. It gives you everything that you love about like a crispy, crunchy topping. So good. And we got a ton of spinach in here so getting our nutrients in here too p.s the mac and cheese by itself also has nutrients it's just different kinds of nutrients <sighs> that was delicious
I've already gotten something on the shirt. <laughs> tea, no less. That won't well, steam. This might be nostalgic for you guys too, but like a tuna casserole just feels, I don't know, like my childhood. Not even because I had tuna casserole all the time, but I just loved tuna fish sandwiches. I loved mac and cheese. It's like everything I love combined into one. Let's get into this. I'm really, really excited. <laughs> tuna melt mac and cheese, oh my gosh. The tuna is like really shredded up in here. Guys. Oh my gosh. The cheddar is like the ode to the mac and cheese. I always put American cheese on my tuna melts. Though some people do put cheddar. So I figured the combination would really round it out nicely. I was right. Hmm? Hot. Mm. Those Ritz crackers, I didn't do anything to them. I just crushed them up. It was so easy and they're so crunchy and buttery and delicious. I really, really like the fresh tomatoes on here too. I like the contrasted temperatures because the tomatoes are kind of cold room temperature. Obviously the mac and cheese is hot. And whenever you have a tuna melt, you don't have hot tomatoes, you have fresh sliced tomatoes. So I thought that this would make more sense for a tuna melt mac and cheese. Mm. Mm. I'm so happy with this. Mm. Kittens. Mm. P.S. The chicken stock worked beautifully. It's still super creamy, but lighter, which I really like. It's got a similar amount of protein, way fewer calories. So nice little hack to make it a little bit lower in fat. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Mm. These tomatoes are so sweet. It really, really makes it. Last minute decided I wanted to add celery seed because there's celery in tuna salad. It really adds that celery flavor without like having hot celery. And then the paprika, I was like, oh, add a little bit of color. Something about this just felt right with paprika. Like I love paprika with like deviled eggs, egg salad. So I kind of went in that direction. Deviled eggs, egg salad, tuna salad. Why not? <laughs> mm. 
I have a feeling Shane's really gonna like this. Butters is a complete psychopath. <laughs> If I didn't mention it before, I brewed my own sweet tea. I'm gonna use stevia, so it's not like real sugar. Though still natural sugar, I guess. This was so flipping good, guys. I can't get over it. The tuna works so well in this. Mm. That's it, I'm buying a metal straw. I'm still eating it. <laughs> Somebody stop me! Oh my gosh. If you like tuna fish, if you like tuna melts, if you like mac and cheese, you gotta make it. And yeah, that's it. That's it for me. I feel good. Thank you guys again so much for joining today. And I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.